Here we are, Tasteless. It is game number two, Minigun against Die Star. The map, Terminus Re, and Minigun leads 1-0. to zero. Yeah, we saw an interesting game with these two guys uh, in game number one. Unfortunately, our Terran player was kind of unable to have any presence on the map. Uh, you know, he lost his ghost to those uh, feedbacks from the High Templars, and from there it was just pretty much a one-sided game. The Storm Drop's playing a pretty big role as well. I think our Terran's going to have to have much more solid uh, mid-game and late-game if he's going to pull through with a win in this series. Yeah, uh, you know, i I got to go back to that last game for a minute, Tasteless, and be a little bit critical of Die Star. He got, what was it, four or five ghosts feedbacked, had this medium amount of units in the middle of the game, and decided to attack anyways. In what world does that attack ever work? Well, you know, and another factor with that was there was an observer over the army the entire time. Now, yeah. you shouldn't always be scanning your army, but if you see a robotech, you have to assume there's at least a one observer on top of you. You know, you have the to... Game, especially when you're moving. Absolutely. I mean, you have to put down a scan or two. If Protoss sees exactly where your army is and what, he ha what you have, as long as he can make good decisions, you are actually dead, so... Definitely something that you have to uh, take care of there. I gotta tell you, I, I'm hoping to see some stronger play out of Die Star this game. I, I want to see this at least go to a game three. These are both two very good players. <laughs> and, and I think you're absolutely right. And, you know, with uh, guys like this, there is a lot of pressure. This is a big event. Uh, the IPL, one of the biggest esports events in the world right now. And I think, uh, you know, we didn't see the best game from our Terran player. For Protoss, it was pretty straightforward. I mean, yeah. I think we didn't really see any major mistakes from the Protoss. He was harassing. He had some great storm drops. And, yeah, and I, I like looked that pretty a lot, easy. actually. You know, we never really see storm drops. And to see someone finally starting to mix that in, you got a couple warp prisms. He went around. He tried some harassment. Some of it was more successful than others, but... Uh, Really, that, that lends me to believe that our Protoss player will end up taking this series. Yeah, so far he's looking pretty good. Uh, one thing to note about the previous game we saw, since this game hasn't really picked up yet, is that uh, we didn't see him tech to Colossus right away. He got a Robo Bay, got Observers, and went right into Harassing. And I think we need to see a little bit more of that from Protosses uh, mm. everywhere. I mean, I'm not just the Korean ones we cast at the GSL, or, yeah. um, you know... The, ones we're seeing here at IPL is if you go Colossus it's pretty clear to the Terran uh, regardless of the Terran's you know experience or intelligence it's just so clear that you have to get Vikings yeah that I think mixing it up and for instance going for a Templar tech doing some harassment and as you said you know with the psionic storm drop doing stuff that we don't see as much in Starcraft 2 is really going to put a Terran player on his toes and as we could see in our previous game he just wasn't really prepared for that. Yeah, quite true. You know, there's a lot more options, I think, when you're not just relying most of your supply on this Colossus-based army, which forces you into stalkers to protect them, which forces you into sentries to keep stuff away from etc., etc. But anyways, on to this game. We do have a Hellion being made. We do have a lot of tech coming out of Die Star. Two gas on this map, a map uh, that we a lot of times see very fast command centers on. And look at this SCV getting by with the Stalker. Will end up taking it down, not, but not before it sees a couple more gateways right there. Yeah, he's doing a pretty good job, uh, the Protoss is, of keeping Terran outside of his base. Uh, interesting opener here. He's going to go for a starport. This usually indicates that we're going to see the one base um, build that I actually like to do a lot during the beta, Mass <laughs> Marines. <laughs> I know we joke What's about the, name it, of that build? the tasteless build. Yeah, it's that build or any build that wins. <laughs> but um, you know, on a serious note, it's one where you essentially get um, you know uh, point defense point drone. defense drone, push forward, get siege tanks, get marines, and um, you know you can do a pretty strong push. He can go for banshees as well and try to expand. Oh, and here the Hellion goes to try to get by. Will there be a force? Nice. Oh, yes. Force field does go down and makes a nexus right afterwards. I am liking Minigun's play so far here. Good usage of that force field. If that Hellion had got in, he would have known every single thing going on. But of course, that probe was out there. So, Die Star may have some idea of what's going on. Look at this. This kid is going seriously all in, Tasteless. Another barracks being produced as well. And then normally with a build, if you're going to do an all in like this, I feel like the Terran is sort of doing two things at once. He's getting the bunker at his entrance. 
he could have spent that money on an additional barracks. I know that it is a little bit scary uh, when you see additional gateways in the Protoss' base, but mm. you know, you're you, if you're essentially going for a one base uh, attack move, which it looks like he definitely is now, yeah. you don't need to have a bunker. Yeah, I mean, you're, you're investing your money in the wrong direction. Um, and as we can see now, uh, you know, a Raven is on the way, so he will be doing the point defense drone technique, uh, which basically makes stalkers useless. Yeah, you know, against this, there's a few things you can do as Protoss. Personally, I like to defend off one base. The Banshee is coming in, and no, he has not seen it yet, so his units do just sit there, and will that Banshee be able to get in here and get a lot of kills? This could really dictate the game. Let's see, here it comes, and it looks like one kill. Up comes the army right away. They're spilling into the main base here, warping in one Stalker. The Stalker should be killed off, but the important thing to note is that that Stalker did buy time, so there weren't more probes killed. Yeah. Only three probes killed in that attack. Um, not a huge deal. Not a huge deal, really. You know, what's weird about this um, is we don't have Cloak yet, Yeah. and normally if you're going to do a rush like this with a Banshee, uh, stalling your all in, you would get a cloak. You know, it looks like, in fact, instead of cloak, he's spending that gas on siege mode. And, uh, you know, the cool thing about getting cloak with it is, of course, you can snipe an observer because you do have that raven. And if you do end up doing that, Protoss is like, oh, gee whiz, this is bad. Uh, but, you know, let's go back to what the Protoss can actually do here. There's a couple ways to take out one of these one base all ins with point defense drone and a lot of Marines. And, well, one way is to get Colossus out and to lay down some really good force field, trap those marines, and just reduce the marine count. Oh, look at that nice banshee clean up the probe. But uh, anyways, you reduce the marine count, and then eventually crush through. You, you kind of slow play it. The easiest way to stop it is because Terran is dependent on the, the strength of siege mode, you don't wait at the uh, entrance of your base. You yeah. wait outside their base, make them siege up, walk away. Meanwhile, you're continuing to produce units. They can't leave um, just with the Marines and the siege tanks. You're also likely to force them to spit out a point defense drone prematurely. Yeah, that's always nice as well. And, of course, the other way would be super fast charge zealots, but that is not an option here. He is going for Colossus. He is going for Thermal Lance, but he has got to get off good force fields. A lot of this is going to depend upon that. He's got to run out front. Do not let the first engagement be right He's, in front of your nexus. I got, I, I'm a little bit... Uh, kind of startled by the Protoss actually letting the Terran move across the map like this. Even if you dart out once, you can get one point defense drone forced out. And here we go. Oh! Poor force fields there. He really needed to trap some of those Marines and take them out. Uh, the siege mode was not a... Well, the tanks were in siege mode, so he could have done a lot more damage there, but here we go. Will he be able to take out this Banshee? And, and does nice. take it out. Nice move there, but... The Marines still coming back up, and ah, uh, you know, these are the moments that you need to actually go ahead and force field behind those Marines and make the Colossus deal the damage. As is, he's letting the Terran dictate this battle, moving up, leapfrogging his siege shanks, and the Marines are all alive. As you can see, he's getting so close. Um, he's almost in range of the Nexus here. In fact, with this siege tank coming up right here, I believe he will be, uh, what, looks at like one tank uh, spot away. And with that, the Burrus is going to have to make a decision. Do I attack? Or uh, do I just go up my ramp and give this up? You know, at this point, uh -oh. I would almost say give it up and taking a lot of damage on that Colossus. He does have Thermal Lance now, but, you know, there's just too many Marines there. And as those bunkers finish, the DPS from those Marines, the damage per second is going to be unbelievably high. It's going to be very hard to break through, but he is trying a little bit here. Not really doing the best job yet. He is taking out a few Marines. But uh, the Siege Tank and Marines dealing a lot of damage to that Protoss army, and smartly, Minigun decides to abandon this expansion at this point. From here, he is unbelievably behind. Yeah, he invested that money in the Nexus, uh, getting the Assimilators as well over there, and not really having the chance to utilize it. Uh, Terran does not have an additional expansion yet, but when you consider where the uh, players have invested the most in, uh, and what they still have left after that skirmish. Terran is just in a huge lead. Also note, um, even though our Protoss has Colossus, this is not a map where you can just walk out of your main base uh, onto land. You know, the vast majority of your main base is surrounded by outer space, not a low ground, if you will. So he is really in a bad position. And uh, with bunkers coming up here right now, I don't know if there's really a whole lot Protoss can do. Yeah, well, nice move right there, and... The all-in does continue, Tasteless. Uh. <laughs> yes, still all-in. Normally yeah. we'd see a player revert back. Oh, okay, There we go. There we Finally go. deciding, okay, I'm far enough ahead that I should get more far ahead instead of trying to push too much further. But he has basically all his units over there. The only thing is, 
It's going to be hard to attack up that. Ooh, and we do have a warp prism that is going to be made. Now, what will he do with this warp prism? Just try to elevate all his units out and all in? I will he try to expand? What What do you think, Jesus? I think the best move is to try to elevate her out as quickly as possible. Mm. They're still fairly close uh, with uh, you yeah. know, supply here. That if you try to get out... The, the problem is, though, Terran can then push into the main... Really, Protoss is at such a tremendous disadvantage. I really yeah. can't emphasize that enough for our viewers. And that's really kind of symbolized by this contain that we saw outside of uh, the Protoss' base. The, the map is Terrans right now. Certainly. Uh, you know, the way I like to deal with something like this, if you look at that siege line that we just saw, uh, you know, the tanks are behind the bunkers and they're in a line. If you ha manage to elevate her out, you can crush that by attacking in from a different angle. Yes, that is very true. Yeah, yeah so we're going to have to see if he does something like that. And flies by that Banshee. Not sure if Dystar really saw that, but he does have that Marine. We're going to have to see if that comes into play. Marines all over the place. Good usage of Watchtowers. Dropping a probe off. The Banshee coming back in. Let's see how many kills it can actually get. Uh, six kills on this Banshee thus far. And that's going to be it. That's it. Not the best usage of that Banshee. Uh, okay, so he's <laughs> been spotted. <laughs> And he's going to warp in a zealot. Yeah. Now here's the problem is he did not opt to go for an elevator strat. It looks like instead he wants to take an additional main base mm. uh, while slowing down the Terran back at home and knowing that the Terran's army is basically outside the front of the Protoss' base. He should have lacking defenses, things pretty thin and yeah. um, ill-equipped to deal with something like this and try to take it from there. But again, the big problem is how is he going to get his entire army outside the base as the game goes on? As the game goes on, he's going to have uh, more and more units, and that's a lot more stuff he has to carry out. Oh. Like he, spotting the warp prism. Here come the zealots. They have to do damage. And I don't see it happening, Artosis. No, these zealots are not really going to do anything. This I think this was so ill-advised. Really, maybe, you know, get the probe out there, make your expansion, but then what are you, are you going to actually do at this point in the game? He has full tech. He has all the watchtowers. And you're going to warp in three zealots and do damage? No, uh-uh. you got to just go ahead... Get your units outside of that main ASAP. And imagine this. He has another warp prism already. If he had two right now faring things out, maybe he gets his army out. And on open ground, without all those bunkers, his army is pretty comparable to what the Terran has. Well, here's another problem. is that When you show your warp prism in a harassment move like that, it's so obvious that the Protoss has something else on the map. Yeah. It's so obvious. Yeah, it really is. That there's really no way that the expansion shouldn't be spotted eventually here. Terran isn't going to think, huh, <laughs> he just made a warp prison. Thank God he only sent zealots in it. You know, he could have expanded yeah. like that. And, you know, with the scan here and seeing the Chrono Boost on the robotics facility, it's pretty obvious. Yeah. The Vikings are out for Terran. He is going to start elevatoring out finally, but imagine, again, he has... Two Warp Prisms right now, already lost one. If he had started this a long time ago and he had three right now, he would have... He would be in the middle of the map. He would actually have map control at this point. Could have flanked the contain and crushed it. So, you know, this is something that sets apart really good players from the absolutely great players as far as crisis management goes. I feel like he's made a few mistakes. But if he can get this whole army out tasteless, I mean, this Taren, would be Taren the beginning of a comeback. Yeah, yeah, Terran does not know. He has not does, seen this. Oh, but he does move out and oh, should see it from here. Oh, this is a mistake. Yeah, yeah. Terran's going to know. And from here, it's pretty easy. Terran regroups, uh -oh. sends everything, and, and these Vikings, I think, are going to get a very good angle, especially with the Raven there. Look at that. Two-point defense drones beautifully laid there. The Stalker's doing no damage. In comes the Terran army from the side to flank, and that's going to have to be GG. This is not something that any player in the world come back from. Oh, my God. A War Prism with the Colossus going out. GG. GG. That is it. So it is tied up, Tasteless. One-to-one.